Excellent. What's up everybody and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today I'm bringing it back to tech. I've got a tech video for you and I have some brand new video cards that were just launched today or today when you guys are watching this video. Uh, this is the GeForce GTX 750 Ti, the GPU by NVIDIA. Very exciting because it's using the new Maxwell architecture, although it is still in a 28 nanometer manufacturing process. A lot of cool stuff to talk about with these cards, um, but actually I've spent a lot of today already at work doing the sort of general overviews of these cards. So I'd encourage you guys to check out our Newegg TV YouTube channel where I will be giving some gritty details on these specific cards. Not going to do quite as much of that today because, um, well, I wanted to share some benchmarks with you guys first of all so you can kind of get an idea of what type of performance these cards have. And then also I wanted to help you guys because if you have looked at these cards and you've thought, I want one, I'm going to get a 750 Ti, there's lots of different options available. And when it comes to a lot of similar cards using the same GPU, it can come down to some minute details deciding which one to get one over the other. So I've got a pretty nice selection here from some of the top tier manufacturers. Gigabyte, of course, MSI, a couple over here from EVGA, as well as ASUS. So I'm going to give you guys a closer look at each one of these cards, kind of give you the pros and cons of each one, from my opinion, looking at, looking at these and working with these today. But I want to start off with some benchmarks because, first of all, how do you even know if you want a 750 Ti? Well, performance is a good... Uh, way to look at that. So what I'm going to do right now, share some benchmarks uh, from Team Red. The closest competitor right now is the Radeon R7 260X. So I'll be comparing uh, this HIS version of that for you guys as well. Throwing that in along with the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 750 Ti, the WinForce Edition right here, MSI's Twin Frozer Gaming Edition, uh, the ASUS Dual Fan Cooling Solution. It's not the Direct CU2, but still has a dual fan cooler. Uh, and then we got the EVGA for the win edition, which is their high kind of best of the best, as well as a, a bit more standard EVGA superclocked. And I want to point out that all of these cards come overclocked right out of the box. So without further ado, here's some benchmarks for you. So I hope you guys like those benchmarks, and if you couldn't tell, the EVGA uh, for the win edition, just a beast, especially when it comes to overclocking, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with a closer look at each card, and I'm going to be a little bit critical here because, again, I'm trying to show you guys what I mostly liked or didn't like about each card. But this is a WinForce Edition card. I really like Gigabyte's WinForce cooler. Uh, it stays nice and quiet, does a really good job cooling. Uh, and this one has two downward firing fans, big aluminum fin array, giving you huge uh, copper heat pipes, 8 millimeter heat pipes on either side. Uh, so it's going to keep things nice and cool. But honestly, when it comes to cooling performance with the 750 Ti, the Maxwell architecture is very efficient. So it does not generate much heat. Uh, the hottest I saw any of these cards get was about 55 degrees. So uh, the cooling is not quite as important um, in that respect. So uh, the things about this card that I wasn't a huge fan of, the blue PCB, I'm just, uh, I really not a, not a big fan of the blue PCB. It doesn't really match with much uh, at least it's not quite the turquoise color that we've seen Gigabyte do in the past as well as some other manufacturers, but um, I guess that's one little complaint there. The other thing here, and I'm going to come back to this with some other cards, is going to be the video outs. Um, you need DisplayPort 1.2 in order to do G-Sync, and as you might notice here, Gigabyte does not give you DisplayPort 1.2. got a couple dual-link DVIs, including a DVI-I, so you got analog connections there, so you got legacy support. Then two HDMIs, and Gigabyte is saying you can do 
a 4K display at 60 hertz via two HDMI outs. I have not seen a monitor that supports that at this point, but I suppose that is something that you might be interested in if you were looking into 4K displays. Personally, I'd rather have the display port, which can do 4K natively, as well as have, again, that G-Sync support. So, uh, again, solid card, very, very well performing, and uh, this particular card runs at uh, 1033 megahertz base clock and 1111 megahertz boost clock. And when I uh, put a load on it, it actually boosted up to about 1188.5. So again, very nice overclocking performance out of the box, but uh, still not quite as high as the EVGA for the win edition. And again, uh, the, the PCB, that's more of an aesthetic complaint. And the video outs, ouch, that's just not my favorite. Now, MSI sent us over a few different versions, and this is their gaming series, their G series. It's a bit prettier. There's another one they sent over that's not quite as big as this, but size, that's the biggest thing that jumped out at me about this one. Uh, this one's a full 10 and a half inches, I believe, long. You know what? I forgot to double check and measure it. Well, it's, it's about 10, 10 inches long. The uh, Gigabyte one was uh, just about seven and a half, so that one keeps things pretty reasonable, but this one... Just really big, and it doesn't seem necessary to have it that quite that big. So that was one thing I noticed about this. Um, you'll see when I get to the EVGA one, just how small these 750 Ti's can actually be. And again, with the GPUs not getting that hot, thanks to the efficiency, as well as just with the fact that it's not a super high-end GPU that generates a lot of heat, you, the, the heat dissipation really isn't quite as much of a factor. So it's an excellent cooler again. It's gonna stay nice and quiet. It's gonna do a really good job, but the size of this one was just, it, it, it's, it's going to be an issue in certain systems, especially if you're looking for mini ITX or something along those lines. And then apart from that, again, oh my gosh, video outs. Again, MSI has gone with a uh, DVI-D, so that's digital only right there, an analog VGA out. And I know they're keeping that there for legacy support, but I, I just hate these. I don't like VGAs. You might as well, I, my opinion, you could have done a DVI, um, a DVI-I with the VGA adapter and been just fine. But then finally, they also got the HDMI out. So again, you're not gonna have G-Sync support with this card. And to me, that's, that's a big issue. If you're investing in a new card, you want access to those new features. Apart from that, again, really solid card. Uh, from a, an aesthetic standpoint, you got the MSI kind of really dark brown PCB. So it's not quite as egregious as the blue of the Gigabyte one. Oh, and I should say again, the base clock on this one, 1059. Boost clock 1137, and uh, when you put a load on it, it actually gets up to about 1215. So again, a nice overclock out of the box from this card, but just a couple little things that I feel like could have really elevated the feature capability. Next up, we have the Asus. This one's maintaining the design aesthetic of the DirectCU 2 coolers, although this is not a DirectCU 2 cooler, because although it does have the two fans, it does not have the direct copper contact. But again, cooling, not a huge issue with the 750 Ti's. This one will stay nice and cool even without that direct copper connection or any heat pipes involved. You got a pretty decent size aluminum fin array right there, which expands out to provide plenty of surface area. So again, this card was staying nice and cool, nice and quiet. The card measures in at about eight and a half inches long, which isn't huge, but again, could be smaller. The uh, size of the cooler extends a few inches beyond the length of the PCB right there. They have this really wonky positioning for the six pin connector that I thought was also a little bit weird. It's right up there by the bracket. Usually you'd see it down on that end, which would make more sense when you're running your cabling and everything. So I guess that's something to consider. At first I thought it didn't have a six pin because the 750 Ti doesn't need a six pin. Um, the MSI, for example, I forgot to point that out, but the MSI doesn't have a six pin at all, which is uh, one of the pluses from that card. Um, but apart from that, uh, again, nice dark, uh, dark brown PCB. So aesthetically looks pretty nice. Uh, but then one more time, down here with the display outs, and I can't quite figure out why they're doing this one. This one has four, but they split off the, uh, the analog connectors here, so they got two digital dual-link DVIs, a standalone VGA. I'm guessing you cannot use all four of these at the same time. You can probably use three of the four. And then an HDMI, so plenty of connectivity there, and you can do 3D surround, or not 3D surround. Well, yeah, I think you can do 3D surround, but you can do NVIDIA surround for, for triple display which is cool, although you'd have to play at really low settings to do that with the 750 Ti. Uh, but yeah, again, no display port, so no G-Sync compatibility there. So that's something to keep in mind, and I've seen that with several of these 750 Ti cards. So uh, keep an eye out for that, guys, because if you are looking to take advantage of G-Sync, you're gonna want a 750 Ti card, or well, any uh, NVIDIA card for that matter, that maintains a display port out so you can use G-Sync. Apart from those complaints though, a very nice card, and again, this one is also overclocked out of the box. Base clock, 1072, 
boost clock 1150 and when under load I saw it getting up to about 1215 megahertz max on the GPU so quite nice and now a couple EVGAs and if you guys hadn't already noticed I saved these for last because yes these are going to be my personal picks from the cards the 750 Ti's that I've seen so far so this is a GTX 750 Ti super clocked or SC uh, from EVGA although this one is overclocked almost as much as the For the Win edition uh, this one comes in at 1176 base clock, 1255 boost clock, and under load, without you doing anything, it's going to get up to about 1320. Pretty impressive for a card this size. They are not using a supplemental 6-pin connector, so that is uh, one of those cool things that will allow you to use this card with a lower wattage power supply, for example, or simply not have to have that extra, extra cable to plug in. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you got one big old fan that stays pretty quiet, uh, not too loud, definitely. And just the overall design, I, I really liked for this card. You got a black shroud, a black PCB, stays very, very short here, so um, this is, this is going to fit in tons and tons of systems. I keep forgetting to measure these before I put this in there, but look, 6 inches. Like, less than 6 inches, measured from the bracket. So, this is going to fit in just about any case. I was actually so happy because when I had this installed, I was able to reach the little release catch on this without even have to, having to get a poke or anything. So, I don't know, just... Just the simple joys in life that uh, make me happy. Uh, they've even done some nice little little pointers, like they've uh, put kind of a black powder coating on the radial aluminum fin things there in the middle, which is pretty nice. And then uh, they also have a black powder coating on the rear bracket. Again, just a nice little touch. They got those extra wide gaps there to uh, allow air to escape. And then, oh my gosh, video outs. These are maintaining closer to the NVIDIA reference specs. So you got a dual-link DVI with analog connection points there. So with a DVI to VGA adapter, you could use that with an older monitor. HDMI right there, and then, oh my gosh, full-size DisplayPort. That means you've got all the goodness of DisplayPort 1.2, including support for G-Sync. Hooray! Good job, EVGA. And if you guys are looking for a small card that doesn't eat up too much power, has some really nice performance, check out the uh, 750Ti SC. I know I didn't include this one in the benchmarks, but you can pretty much look at the stock benchmarks that I showed, look at the For the Win benchmarks, and assume this is going to land somewhere in between, but closer to the For the Win edition. And lastly, the EVGA For the Win edition GeForce GTX 750Ti. And as you can see here, they have an ACX cooler on this thing. So um, that's just nice to get right out of the gate. The ACX cooler from EVGA is quite a nice cooler. Stays uh, very cool, very quiet, dual fans, and uh, I know I've been kind of complaining size-wise about some of these cards and how they're longer or larger than they need to be. This one measures in at 9 inches, but personally I feel for the performance that you get, um, it, 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 it's, it's acceptable in this particular area. Because this one comes out of the box, base clock 1189, boost clock 1268. Uh, it gets up to 1345 under load without you touching anything and uh, because this already starts so high and because Precision X only gives you about 135 points of uh, GPU, extra GPU frequency, I was actually able to get this thing up to where it was boosting to 1435, which is pretty insane for a single GPU. So some really excellent performance gains from that as you probably saw in the benchmarks. But apart from that, again, nice black PCB, a bit of extra extension here to protect the uh, fin array and the a ACX cooler, as well as some extra ventilation. Um, all the goodness of that ACX cooler, you can see the uh, aluminum fins right there in the middle. Uh, there are some copper heat pipes as part of that ACX cooler. You can see the termination ends right there. Those just go straight across and uh, make contact with the GPU down there. But a very nice looking card. Uh, it's going to fit nicely in anyone's case. you got the EVGA. Uh, logos properly there on the side. You do have a six pin connector for this one, but I, again, I felt for the overclocking potential um, that was warranted in this particular circumstance. And if you really don't need all of the extra oomph that you get from the For the Win edition, then just go with that smaller uh, super clock edition and, and you'll be all set right there. You don't need the extra six pin and it's overclocked almost as much. And uh, I didn't quite see how much headroom I could get on that one, but. Um, you know, I, I had a limited amount of time today, so there you go. And then finally, again, uh, the black uh, the black PCI bracket here at the back, full-size display port, HDMI, as well as a dual-link DVI, so all the support for all the NVIDIA goodness that you could want. So a great entry card, uh, I'm going to think, for people who are building a basic computer right now, you want your display port, get your system set up, Get a, uh, get a get a G-Sync capable monitor, plug that in, and then, hey, maybe in the future, upgrade to a faster card if that's your bag, if that's what you're feeling you need. Uh, but a great way to start right here. So there's a closer look at the EVGA GeForce GTX 750 Ti for the win. 
So there you go, guys. And if I haven't made it abundantly clear already, my favorite from um, amongst this group and the cards that I've seen so far, which is not all of them, by the way, I'm not looking at every card from every manufacturer, is definitely the EVGA for the win edition right here. It just had that really nice combination of the uh, top level performance. I feel like it was a really reasonable design. And then again, uh, EVGA uh, sticking with the DisplayPort 1.2 connectors on board. Wasn't quite sure why the other cards didn't opt to go with that because it seems to me like a, a really good uh, upgrade path. You know, you can start off with a 650 Ti right or a 750 Ti right now. Maybe you don't have quite enough cash for that. Pair that up with maybe uh, your shield if you want to do some streaming. Uh, set that up with a, with a G-Sync monitor because that's something that's really exciting even for even for people who aren't investing in a top end graphics card. Just having that type of gameplay, I know, is going to be very, very, uh, very popular. So um, DisplayPort 1.2 and all the capabilities for the win definitely uh, my top choice amongst this group but of course lots of great uh, options as well from these uh, the other manufacturers if you're interested in those if you like the look or the design or something specific about that hey go for whichever one best suits your needs but i'd love to hear your feedback on my uh, conclusions after looking at these cards let me know if you think that that was definitely the best one to go to go with or if you thought one of these other cards was also an excellent contender Thank you so much for watching this video, though. Uh, stay tuned for more Just Like It. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll see you all next time.